On the 20th of April, 1933, a young girl with her mother fought their way to catch a glimpse of the newly appointed Chancellor of Germany, Adolf Hitler. The young girl, named Benila Ninau, happened to share a birthday with Hitler, and from this coincidence, a five-year-long relationship would develop. The reason that this interaction is so disturbing is that the young girl was of Jewish descent, someone who in the new regime would face exclusion and discrimination. It is perhaps helpful to briefly describe Hitler's and the Nazi party's relationship with children. They were keen to indoctrinate the youth, shaping them into the perfect Nazi citizen. Children would join the Hitler Youth Organization or the League of German Girls. Within these groups, gender expectations were clearly set out. Military for boys and child rearing for girls. Once old enough, the young adults would join the Reich Labour Service, where again, their work would be to guide their role in the regime. All the while, these groups would proclaim the greatness of National Socialism, and how Hitler was saving Germany from all manner of threats, including the Jews. Whilst at school, the children would learn about the dangers of Judaism, the glory of the Aryan race, and the impending struggle against their perceived enemies. The ultimate goal was to create children willing to give their lives and bodies for the Nazi regime, and for the furtherance of the ideology. As for Hitler, he was keen to present himself as a man of the youth. Whilst he never had children, he was keen to be photographed with children. Usually these images would be photographs with the children of Martin Bormann, head of the Reich's Chancellery and Hitler's private secretary, or with the children of Joseph Goebbels, the Minister of Propaganda. Children of other high-ranking Nazis would be used to show Hitler as a fatherly figure, with the photographs taken by Hitler's personal photographer, Heinrich Hoffmann. Often these photographs would be captured at Hitler's private residence, the Berghof, where Nazi leadership and their families would spend time with Hitler, both socially and making decisions as to the running of Germany. There was even a book published with photographs taken by Hoffmann highlighting Hitler's care of the young people. The book is called Youth Around Hitler. The goal was to paint Hitler as not only the father of the young children of Germany, but Germany as a whole, the man who would direct and steer Germany through times of upcoming struggle. Now, back to the events of the 20th of April, 1933. As part of his birthday celebrations, Hitler interacted with supporters who had come to see him at his Hause Wackenfeld, which would later become the Berghof. The young Benila, along with her mother, Carolina, were able to make it to the front of the crowds and catch Hitler's attention, remarking it was also the young girl's birthday. Hitler, seemingly captivated by Benila's appearance and the coincidence, invited the pair to the house, and would go on to take a number of photographs with her. Bernila looked like the typical, idealised blonde-haired girl. Hitler would meet with Bernila at the Berghof a number of times, with photographs often taken. But, unbeknownst to Hitler, Bernila and her mother were of Jewish descent. Bernila's maternal grandmother had been born to two Jewish parents, though they had converted to Roman Catholicism. Under the Nuremberg Laws of 1935, being a Jew was racially classified and was dependent on one's grandparents. As Benila had a Jewish grandmother, she was considered one quarter Jewish, or mixed race of the second degree. This would mean under the Nuremberg Laws of 1935, Benila would be restricted in a number of ways. Notably, with whom she would be allowed to enter relationships, limited access to higher education and access to certain jobs. She would be denied German citizenship, though it would be possible to obtain approval. When it was discovered that the young girl was of Jewish descent, access to Hitler was restricted by Martin Bormann. This, however, did not stop some 17 letters and even a pair of knitted socks being sent by Bernila to Hitler, though these letters were answered by Hitler's chief adjutant, SS officer Wilhelm Bruckner. At first, Hitler was not informed as to the reason why he could no longer see the girl. According to Heinrich Hoffmann, it was only when Bormann objected to the printing of Berliner's photographs in the Youth with Hitler book did the matter escalate. Hoffmann explained the whole situation to Hitler, and that Bormann wanted to destroy the entire stock of books because of the photographs with Bernila. 
Hoffman noted that Hitler's anger was with whoever told Bormann that Bernila was Jewish. Hitler accepted that he could no longer allow Bernila to visit, but is said by Hoffman to have remarked, There are some people who have a positive genius for spoiling all of my little pleasures. Carolina was therefore told to cease all contact with their Führer as to not cause any potential embarrassment to the regime. The photographs still remained, being sold as postcards, with Benilla referred to as Hitler's child. Tragically, Benilla would not survive the war. She would die on the 5th of October 1943 from spinal polio. The whole affair highlights the Nazis' problem with defining Jewishness along racial lines. There were plenty of German people with Jewish ancestry who did not consider themselves to be Jewish. However, this did not stop them being labelled as fully Jewish under the Von Sea Conference, where the Holocaust was planned. Whilst some Michelin soldiers were allowed to remain in the military, this was dependent on their military record, and they were not permitted to progress through the ranks. The arbitrary and chaotic approach to the characterization of what it was to be Jewish was just one part of the disturbing practices of the Nazi regime. As for the story of Hitler and Jung Benila, it paints an incredibly jarring image. The Nuremberg Laws came into force while Hitler was still in contact with Benila, and it is thought that Hitler was well aware as to her Jewish ancestry as early as 1933. Yet, it was not until 1938 that Carolina was instructed to no longer contact the Nazi leadership. There is no doubt there are those who would like to use this example to confuse or in some way demonstrate that Hitler was a humane character. But in reality, we have no way of knowing just why Hitler continued the relationship with Bernilla. What we do know is that Hitler's regime enacted and carried out horrendous crimes against millions of Jews, killing around 6 million. Such crimes were not committed by some unknowable monsters, but by humans. Humans who were prepared to set aside their humanity in the furtherance of an inhumane political and racial belief. It should not be forgotten that for every child that Hitler appeared kind and humane to, there were countless more who met their end in the gas chambers or executed in a ditch at his direction.